I'm an overwhelmed mess. 2021. Whew. Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Bill and this is Trying to Stand Right, Try New Things in Pop Culture because I've been living under a rock. So today I'm going to be listening to more Wilbur Soot. Thank you for the correction in the comments in my previous video. And speaking of, I'm going to be listening to Your City Gave Me Asthma for the first time. And I do want to say before I start, a lot of people's comments informed me that Wilbur Soot has expressed being in a better place since writing this. Um, I hope that is true. If it's not, it's also okay to not be okay. Uh, links in the description for education and resources on Black Lives Matter, The Trevor Project, as well as mental health resources and crisis lines should you or someone you know need them. Wanted to put that at the front because if everyone's going to tell me he's doing, he's in a better spot now, that also tells me something's going to go down. <laughs> I'm going to get sad. I appreciate that and I appreciate whether you're familiar with my content or that was your first video picking up on how sensitive I am to the lyrics and stories and themes of music. So yay. But I did have a good time listening to uh, some of his uh, funnier stuff. If you haven't checked out that video, uh, please do. But I'm gonna be listening to the whole album, giving my thoughts along the way. Let's do this. Oh, beginning of the video. I don't like saying this at the beginning, but apparently that's what I have to do now. So don't forget to like, and share, and tweet, and subscribe, and tumble and Instagram about the video to help the channel grow and support the channel. That was nice and organic. <laughs> yeah, like things. Anyway, so we're starting out with Jubilee Line. I hope I said that right. And National Rail oh, line like a train. I'm dumb. <laughs> I was like, where is this line drawn? I'm fine. Ooh, I like how soft it is already. Almost like lulling. He said he gave me asthma. Oh, he said it. That's the name of the album. I'm fucking leaving. Valid. Ooh. Oh God! Why did that sound dangerous? Like the train, like approached. You could just feel like a lot of like contemplating and. There's a reason. Oh God! Holy shit! They fail. Holy crap. Like I said, I really like your voice. I mean, I'm glad you're leaving if it's having such a negative effect on you. Like first I thought it was gonna be a little bit more green pollution and things like that. Like your city gave me asthma already. Just that sentiment makes me think pollution, getting sick. But I kind of really appreciate it as someone who also recently stopped living in a city. I also kind of appreciated these intermittent pauses between the lyric lines. Like it felt like someone kind of processing, like still kind of in a bit of a, a disbelief, but deciding what to do. Like this is the moment, like now I have this information and as I process it, what am I going to do with it? And the pavement hurt my feelings. Like first I was thinking more of like, like just that colder feeling of like no familiar faces. You're just a person in a large, population or crowd shouting at the wall and then the sound of the train coming up. I thought it was like a depressing mundane commute, but then hitting on this is why there's barriers, people like harming themselves and damaging to one's mental state when you start to consider this is why they put barriers on the rails. Um, again, links in the description for mental health and crisis resources. I always feel weird saying that I enjoyed a song that's so heavy, but I, I enjoyed it because it like, it, it gave you room to breathe between the lyrics that I really liked. Like, like I said, it didn't feel like someone who made a decision. It felt like someone processing and making that decision. Being told the pollution is harming you started to open your eyes to, you know, the water's toxic and people are more isolated and being more harmed and like it's a cold city. So then it, it reminds me of a day that I was commuting downtown, I just started a new restaurant job. This was like years ago and somebody had jumped on the tracks. And as I'm like two stops away from where it happened, like genuinely like scared and shaking, my first thought was I need to tell them I'm going to be late for my first day of training. And then I got really upset with myself for having that thought. Like I wasn't thinking of the life that was lost. I was just inconvenienced and that really like bothered me. And yeah, like I straight up, my manager at the time, told me that if it hadn't have been for finding the article in the news, they wouldn't have believed me and I would have been let go. And it just, it put a weird feeling on the whole thing and nobody talked about the fact that somebody 
did that. And I couldn't even let myself process that for more than a second because then I had to go back to focusing, like go back to commuting. And it it made me think of that. Like it, it wasn't, you know, the city scared me away. I lost something. No, this is something that's like smart for me and I'm going to do it. And I kind of liked advocating for that. And his voice is really nice, but damn, it was, it, it's a little jarring to go from your new boyfriend and I'm in love with an e-girl to <laughs> to this, but I really enjoyed it. And like I said, I love the feeling of like feeling the the processing and headspace throughout. It felt like the the thoughts were formulating the way that it tempoed out. I really liked that. But damn. <laughs> and next is saline solution. It's about allergies. It's fine, I'm fine. Or just rinsing your mouth out sometimes with salt water, you know, it's good for your mouth. Neti pots. This is sponsored content. <laughs> I'm okay. I'm hoping this is a more positive. It's fine if it's not, it's fine. <laughs> I'm fine. You know, that sounds sad. Damn. I think this time I'm dying. Oh, damn. Ooh, adding in a little brass there makes it like a little more alert and jarring, but I like that choice. The fact and the fictions while simultaneous. Ooh. And then enter it, and like another instrument, and it's like another thought, another thing. Bubbles my mind. Oh no, I too cannot sleep well lately. Damn, I love the music of it, I love the sound. I'm the deceased plane victim. What? No, I thought, no. <laughs> ah, <laughs> laughter. Holy crap. I really enjoyed that. I love the sound of it. I loved, like I said, like different instruments starting to like kind of kick in with the guitar and it felt like different focal points for um, these anxieties. What's the word? You're constantly scared something's like medically wrong with you. Hypochondriac. Thank you, hypochondriac. I thought that was the word, but then I thought I was getting it wrong. Hypochondriac. I kind of liked how we had these different ways of exploring those avenues musically, like the different music, but then also the different in inflections and sometimes the tempo would start to kind of pick up and first it, it, it felt calm, but then it got a little more frantic and then subdued again. And it was like, like you could feel like that panic rise and lower, even down to like, I'm looking at the lyrics now and down to like even the word choice, like I think this time I'm dying, like letting you know that it's, it's a recurring thing. Whether it's observation or autobiographical, taking the time to like really explore and illustrate it like that, I thought was really interesting. I like the idea of trying to work your way through it. The saline solution, like salt, like it's kind of like just a general thing to do. Like it, like it felt like the early stages of trying to process it, but it felt so on going. It gave me this feeling of of trying to understand and overcome. I still, I really love his voice. I love his music choices. Like it keeps everything relaxed, but it also brings a lot of emphasis to the lyrics. When you have a message like this, that makes a lot of sense. It's <laughs> liked is such a positive word, but I, I enjoyed it. It's just, it's so upsetting. But I, I really liked taking you through the steps of like that spiral. I'm, I've made my choice. I'm going to live with it. I'm, I'm secluded in hatred. And then like, you know, now it's alienating me, you know, avoid the plans uh, friends are making. I'm a leech sucking blood bag, taste of feet. It's a sandbag, like starting to like really take you into that headspace a bit. Like I, as much as I want everything to always, every story I want to have a happy ending at the end, I appreciate this feeling of it's an ongoing thing. And I liked that feeling of acknowledgement is an important and first step to me anyway. Like I really liked how once you got into that final portion of the song, like it felt almost like flustered and like the emotions kind of peaking and like kind of covering it up, wanting it to be done, like that overwhelmed feeling. And then also lines about the alarm clock is mocking me. Like it's disrupting like your, your stress and your sleep schedule and like possibly even giving you insomnia and things like that, which then also would contribute to now I'm more scared because now I'm not sleeping. Like feeling that kind of build of things, really feeling how overwhelming it can be. It felt so subduing, but then the thought, it would make the thoughts louder. Like it just happens um, at random intervals, like you're having just like a, a chill kind of day and then all this starts to kind of kick up and start to happen. And it, it just made me think of like how um, sporadic it can all just like start out of nowhere. I liked illuminating and illustrating that. I'm glad everyone told me ahead of time that he's doing okay, I hope that's true. And again, 
If he's not, if you're not, that's totally fine. It is also okay not to be okay. It's very concerning, but it's important stuff. And I, I really like that. And next is, since I saw Vienna, the hot dog place in Chicago, obviously. That's what it means. I think that place closed. Did it really? That's upsetting. 2021, all right, since <laughs> I saw Vienna. That's pretty. If that's him or whoever's doing that guitar, very talented. I ooh, that's so nice. From the roadside. Ooh, hello harmonies. Ooh, this is relaxing. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> hello. Tried to move on. It's been. Oh, hello. Okay. Now I'll put down my roots when I'm dead. Damn. I mean, have you want to live your life? Ooh. I like how at peace this one feels. Like, I don't want to say like resigned, because that sounds so negative. Just at peace with the notion, but also musically. Like, it's just so soft and gentle. Describing a part of yourself, like loving, loving the fact that you travel, like not really keeping a lot of stuff with you. You know, most of your belongings are, are gifts from other people or things that you've like found on your way. I, I liked also that it felt like someone trying to illustrate where they're at and that they're not ready for a home or a relationship or at least a, a serious one or a commitment. I really liked that. Like it felt like someone at peace sharing something, but I also loved that for a minute we had like some harmonies then it was like, now let me be on my own. Like it, it felt like vocally too, like a short term but significant like relationship. I really loved that. And like trying to be like reassuring, but being so kind of blunt, like this is something that you do understand about yourself and where you're at right now. I like that, but I don't know, that one, that one just felt like really warm. And I think that's because, like I said, I think it comes from a place of uh, conviction. Like this is just where I'm at right now. And I also love that notion of like, when you're being honest, Honest with yourself and a partner or a friend or just other people like it gives you that like peace that serenity of self like it I don't know it was just reassuring and I, I liked that kind of underlying theme there of like someone who understands and is open and honest about something about themselves like how that isn't always gonna be necessarily easy but it removes a level of like conflict there like it, it gives you that like inner peace in a sense. I really love that and that, 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 I wish I could still commute right now. That's a hell of a nice like commute song too. And like, I just loved how like warm it felt for me. Like, I don't know, uh, I'm looking at the lyrics and part of it feels very warm, but part of it feels a little like cold emotionally. But like I said, it was the music that let me know like this person isn't, isn't ready for this and understands that about themselves. And is just e expressing and letting somebody know out of consideration and care. And I liked that illustration of honesty and with yourself and others, like I said, like just like, it, it felt like clarity. It felt like a resolution to me. You know what I mean? It's not always easy to be told truths when they're hard truths, but it, it felt like someone was just being honest with me and taking me seriously and like letting me kind of process it how I'm going to process it if I were the on the other end of that. Closure. That's what that made me feel. I'm like, what, what word am I thinking of? And next we have losing face. I hope you find your face. Take his face off. I'm okay. I'm just, I'm like, that one was really relaxing. Something bad's gonna happen <laughs> soon. Ooh, this one has more energy. Hello? Ooh! <laughs> I was gonna wait for you. Uh-oh. She wrote an album. Uh-oh. I'm fucking drunk. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. You see better than me. Oh, <laughs> Can he fuck more? Are you good enough to be his wife? Ah, uh, that's a aggressive tactic. As a child of divorce, I don't like being in the middle of these confrontations. No, don't do that. Oh, I thought he meant like he met him. Feel what you're feeling, get it out there, but crap. Can he break me? Can he break you? Oh, it makes me so uncomfortable. It's Which is indicative of like good songwriting and storytelling and just emotional honesty. But like, ew, I want to be excused from the table so bad. <laughs> Have this fight when I leave. I'm losing faith. Ooh, I like how it kind of went through some of these stages of like a breakup and stuff too. Like it's left the blaming him, blaming me and what are gonna be people gonna say. I'm losing. Ooh, and then ending it with I'm losing, yeah. 
like now you feel like you've lost in the you've lost in life or the relationship like like i said like what are other people gonna say oh man like it, it put me in that place of like oh no oh no like they both showed up at a party you know what I mean? Or I'm like letting someone like vent and get it out. And then it's like, oh, I've seen him. Is it like this? Is it this stuff? Is it th these personal things that I'm insecure about or overanalyzing? And it's like, oh, this is getting personal. <laughs> Nothing's wrong with that. Like I, when I've been in these situations, talking to my friends as they go through these kind of things or hearing about stories or even my own like breakup situations and stuff, it's like a lot of this it's very familiar and I loved how being that open, whatever is reality justified or ill-justified, sitting with someone going through this stuff and how it, it did kind of hit the different stages and at some points it felt like the headspace was going out of control and places, cafes that we've been to that like, you've taken this away from me too because now I associate. I really loved kind of going through that. Damn, like it, it made me like, I started to get a little itchy and I kind of loved Kind of like with his comedy songs, like the character that he created for the e-girl songs and everything. Like it, I think he's really good at soliciting a response from from at least me. But I, I, I feel like he does such a great job at encapsulating that emotion so you can feel it too. Like whatever the response he wants, whether uh, laugh, cringe, think about it. But then in this one, like it was just like stress. Cause like it, it, it had that feeling of someone drinking and oversharing at times or letting an insecurity slip in the middle of a rant. But I loved how it got honest towards the end where it's like once you start going down that road and start to let go of blaming yourself, hating this other person, all these things, it's like kind of the bare core of it. It's also like it's painful because it's not only is it a personal pain and makes you doubt or have insecurities about yourself, but it also like addressing that kind of I'm losing face. It's also touching on like how it can feel embarrassing. Like this is someone you associated with your life and other people started to associate the two of you together. It felt like like a dissection. Again, whether it's observation or autobiographical, I, I loved that, that feeling to it where it's like explore it more so you can start to get past it. It felt therapeutic is what it felt like to me. And I, I love, a lot of the songs kind of have that element to it where it all comes from a, a core place of wanting to, so far anyway, like wanting to understand, explore more avenues, express yourself, but then also conquer it or provide avenues or solutions. That one made me really itchy. I think that honesty gives it that kind of response instead of like, you know, oh, everyone's felt that way. You'll get over it. It felt like, you know, this is a little more personal than, than a universal thing, but trying to turn a personal experience into a universal one, I think is magnificent and I think he did it really well I, I like I said like he's really good at like getting a very specific response out of me and I, I think that's my favorite thing about his music so far it was that weird combination of like angry but also like I want you to let this out constructively it just gave me this weird counterbalance of like constructive to write it down but please don't send this letter or text or email you know what I mean and I kind of loved keeping me in that mindset where it's like feel what you're feeling like go through what you're going through but also like Remember that these are other people, you know, and even getting a little like kind of shitty at the end there, like, are you good enough to be his wife? Like those little bursts, those little pointy moments at yourself or at the other person. I, I really liked feeling those. Like it, it made it feel real to me. I just want to get through dinner without somebody fighting. Um, that's concerning. <laughs> I, I, I guess it could also be about like someone who warned you about the relationship if it's paired with the breakup. It's fine, it's fine. It made me feel like a revenge statement, but I hope it's not. I wanna be so wrong. There's only one way to find out. This, yeah. Abuse those I love. Oh no. I ostracize the ones who love me. Oh no. Find myself salting the earth every time that I miss Jesus. Don't trust English boys with far too much free time. Okay, yeah, your sister is right, I'm a piece of shit. I can't focus on the future, only my short sight. Oh, oh god. Waste of time. Jesus, Mr. Soot. It's so fascinating, the story that these songs, hello, he moved. The story that this is all telling. The city gave me asthma and so I moved. Like, I'm scared that something's wrong with me. I'm gonna travel a lot. I'm not gonna lay down roots. You found somebody else. And then your sister was right. You know, there was something 
wrong. There was something to be concerned about. The relationship didn't work out. Like, I'm still going through something or processing something or I wasn't ready or I wasn't the best. I really love taking that time to, like, the ownership of it. Like I said, it's been kind of a fairly recurring thing with these songs. It's like just how open and honest they are and like you know both in how you're feeling what you're experiencing illustrating what goes on like anxieties uh, the way you process things but then also owning up to yeah this turns out it was a bad idea and like taking partial ownership to that uh i can't find the perfect match abuse those i love i ostracize the ones who love me back even in the moment being like no what are you talking about like not understanding the limitations of yourself in a relationship like this it, even earlier with since i saw vienna it, like i said like about being more open and honest at that point like you know i'm not ready for a relationship and maybe all this could be why you know what i mean like this is this is how that self discovery that enlightenment about where you're at or even possibly like who you just are or who you are right now either way how that kind of came to be i like that realization element of it like owning up to this was brought to our attention both of us were warned about it we ignored it and it's like realizing that you thought you knew something about yourself and you were wrong but then taking away lessons from it the way that i treat things behave respond and it's like i, I push away people i really liked that i it's upsetting still it's so weird to say i liked that it sounds like a lot of pain but i like illustrating that talking about it and it didn't feel like a like a blame thing it did oh your sister was right i'm just a piece of shit and off he went it was like i think your sister was right this wasn't a good idea like things i'm focusing on my passions my interests my goals who i am like doesn't line up with wanting this like i'm not blameless here even if it's hindsight after the fact it's still putting two and two together creating something constructive out of a negative and i really like that putting yourself down at the end was such a heartbreaker though like really feeling like you know you learn something about yourself through that whole experience in exchange that i really i really admire that part of it it didn't feel resigned to i will always be this way and i will always treat people like this like it, it felt like a growth moment and wanting to address it and still take ownership of it and I, I really admire that. Uh-oh. I'm gonna get this wrong. La Jolla? Two L's make the Y? I hope I'm saying that right. I don't know what that means. I'm not even good at the one language that I know, let alone other ones. Ooh, that's pretty. Ooh, I like the, the acoustics there. Like, processing, like, thinking, but, like, traveling, like, wanting to escape. really like your voice, sir. Like, it feels like a, like a trance or like a daydream. I tried hard to love me too. Oh, God. Oh, shit. Maybe one day I'll live in La Jolla. Oh, yeah, you said it right. Oh, this just like really hit me in the gut. It was the, um, I wish I could love me too. You know, I've tried hard to love me too. Like, I thought it was about like, oh, starting over. I want to travel. I still miss Vienna. But then it was like that realization that like, you're trying to run away from yourself. Like literally reinvent yourself and be somebody else. That was kind of said uh, earlier. Like I, I push people who love me away. I ostracize people who love me back. Here we are in that mindset there was something too about like the phone ringing again at the end like it was like if he were to leave and like people would worry about him people care about you even while you're trying to process and work on caring about and loving and being kinder to yourself i loved like that like daydream kind of feeling that i got from it though where it was like someone trying to figure things out you know like watch the sunset like focus on something like trying to find like a, a a positive through all that but i loved the realization of like it's it's an internal thing it's not you know if you do live in la jolla like you're still gonna have to work on yourself like you're still you you know like i said like throughout this whole thing the honesty of it but i i really liked that one because it, it really put me in a place of the truth or the fact being offered where it's like you need to you know love yourself to be able to love others and i felt like that was getting lightly touched on previously but then this one where it's like i've tried hard to love me too that one just really hit me uh i'm trying to ignore the skyline it cuts off because the phone's ringing it's like i'm trying to get lost like 
provide distance, but then the phone ringing, meaning someone calling him, like that person still reaching out, like that feeling of support, even though you don't realize that it's there or might not even feel worthy of it at times. I love that sentiment of like someone reaching out, making sure that you're okay too. I don't know, or even calling you back because it started with a dial tone. And I loved also how it had this like care to it where it's like thinking of the person listening to it in the future. Like I felt like I was in a safe place while bringing up these kind of things, like the emotional headspace, lacking in positivity and kindness for yourself. I felt like the song still tried to give like a soft place for that. And I feel like that's a very giving thing to do. And I think it even kind of, while being comforting to someone listening to it, I think it's also about like how alluring and misleading that notion is of, oh, I could just run away and leave. I don't know. It just, it felt like the best Gen Z Margaritaville I've ever heard in my life. I really loved that a lot. You know, drinking cocktails out over the water, my own personal sunset, like it, that's not, that's not going to be what's going to help you here. You know what I mean? Instead of leaving everything behind, it's like find the value and what you can and work on yourself and you can find that better place that way, like through internal work. I don't know. I just, that's just what I take away from it. I don't know. Also, if you feel like moving, move. <laughs> like, I don't know. I really related to that song a lot and I really enjoyed it. And it's just, I don't know. It felt very comforting while I was being given such a heavy thing to, to consider and think about. And I, as someone like me, who's very words, lyrics, and story heavy, I really appreciated giving me a soft place to land musically. And we're closing out the night with, I'm sorry, Boris. Is Boris a person? Is Boris a place? I just realized I don't know anything about. I, I was born in Europe, but I've never consciously been to Europe. <laughs> I'm really excited to see how this is gonna end now. After taking us through so many different, like very honest head spaces, I'm really interested after that. Ooh, this one already feels a little lighter. Okay. Oh, we shifted gears there, musically. Strains and hugs, planes and sushi. Oh, yay! I'm not good for anyone here. Oh, no. And rich men still shit. I don't know any of these places, but I'll take your word for it, sir. Here alone. Oh, God. Jump under trains before helping you. Oh, God. My best friends and enemy. Oh. I don't think I want to leave you. Oh, crap, man. That's so valid. I really loved that, but it like really upset me. And there's also a lot of things that went over my head because I don't know any of these places or what's going on with the government. But like there was even a moment talking about like the, they'll charge your healthcare before helping you. They'll make you jump under trains before helping you, which Jesus, I don't know. There was something about it where it's like talking about like the city gives me asthma, like talking about just running away to uh, La Jolla. It, it's like, but there's still kind of like what I was talking about, like find the things here that give you so much meaning it's like i think it's that tear of like i have to like leave and do what's best for me you know trying to justify like i'm a traveler like when i went to vienna like should have thought about this before you know getting into a relationship and things like that being more forthcoming about it in other settings and situations then it's like about like all all the people you'll be worried about all the things that you'll miss like it sounds like he's still like left. I, I don't know much about what's going on over there. I hope everyone's okay and everything's okay. Don't really feel like I have much room to talk about the state of other places right now. We, <laughs> While focusing on all these negatives, the city giving me asthma and the relationship that didn't go well, the things you need to learn about yourself, the realities about like learning to love yourself too, and finding that e energy to like do what's best for you, but like it also doesn't mean you don't care about all these other things. It doesn't mean that, you know, it's gonna be the easiest thing to do. There's not even a guarantee that it's the right thing to do. And I kind of loved feeling that conflict there. Again, there's definitely a lot here in the specifics that I do not know anything about and I apologize. Felt like taking like one last look around, like, you know, making a decision, but still like not wanting to push it down or deny it or like previously stated, like salt the earth and burn the bridges and stuff. Like it's okay to admit that you're upset or concerned or confused or worried or scared. <sighs> Maybe he didn't leave in the end. I, I'm not 100% sure. Realizing that there are things that you're scared of and worried about and not wanting to just ignore all the things around you, like wanting to help people, like wanting to do what's best for you, but also best for others, but also taking in, instead of telling yourself like, oh, 
none of this means anything to me, at the very least, like letting those things in while you're debating leaving or not. I don't know. There is something about that being the ending of it where it's like, the city gives me asthma. I want to leave because it's like this, it's hurting my body. And then the relationships around you and things like that. Like I said, that feeling of letting yourself acknowledge those attachments and those feelings instead of just burying it down. And it felt like a break in the trend after like so many songs about like not considering others or not considering or acknowledging yourself. I loved that feeling to it in the finale. I loved how just like somber it was and like how conflicting it is. And it's like, this is life. Like nothing is so cut and dry. Things are hard. And I think there was something too about like, say, say he did leave, right? Going all the way back, your city gives me asthma, pollution and things like that. Like that doesn't just affect him. So maybe it is starting to think more of others. And it's like, is leaving the best thing? Should I be staying and trying to make change? Can I make change from afar? Like I said, after neglecting yourself and others, and like, I think starting to consider those things a little more. And I, I kind of liked feeling that like arc, so to speak, going through. It's like maybe even considering on your way out, well, how many other people have been affected this way, felt this way, had similar or the same outcomes as me, like medically or physically or emotionally or mentally. And then maybe even while you're still making this change for yourself personally, still wanting to dedicate yourself to helping people, to change, to, to advocacy. Like, I, you know what I mean? Like kind of realizing I probably am not the only one who's experienced this. Like, I think it's beginning that, that want of change and understanding and helping people and growth and whether you leave or not realizing that like that last realization of the story being the universal one where you're caring for yourself by considering leaving but you're also thinking about everybody else too and I think if nothing else it's that idea of taking your experiences away with you and how they inform you all these experiences whether you chose to stay or go like they all had this influence on him and like how he starts to he neglected other people and starting to think of other people like it it, it started to grow this this want for a, a universal change as well as a personal one too and i kind of really loved that like your experiences still shape who you are i liked that feeling of starting in a this is awful this is gross this is affecting my body it's affecting people's mental health and ending on this place of thinking about everyone and like wanting to do something to help and i i loved that that underlying arc there i really enjoyed this it really felt very personal it, it felt like confessional at times and it just it was very illuminating to a lot of things about like either you or the human condition again i'm not going to sit here and assume everything is autobiographical a lot of it felt very personal but i really loved taking that time and how like that kind of inspiration to provide this advocacy for others and awareness for others and wanting progression and change can start in such a individualistic space as the air is gross, the water is poison, I need to get out of here. And then it's like, or we could fight to change all this. What about everyone else who feels this way who can't get out of here or doesn't want to? You know what I mean? Like I liked how it kind of grew that understanding because it also hit on as we go on this path, the impact you're having on others, your failed relationships, the parts about you to acknowledge, the, the warning signs that are affiliated with you, that you agree with and are acknowledging about yourself. Like it felt like a lot of personal understanding and growth. And it started from this place of, I need to leave the city and the city's not gonna change if I leave. Other people must be going through this too. But then even that notion of some of these things also with you personally aren't gonna change if you just move. You know, like some of them probably will if the city is literally giving you asthma. Like the change, the internal change for you as a human, but then also the universal fundamental change that needs to happen for others too. And I really loved feeling those those thoughts grow. You know, the city is poisoning me. I, I'm afraid I'm going to die. Like that hypochondriac kind of anxiety there. The relationships that you had, it, it failed. And like the selfish, I hate you. I blame myself. I'm losing face. And then, well, wait, what did I really do here? I could just leave. But wait, if I leave, I'm leaving so much behind. I kind of really loved that. Like it, it felt like someone exploring these avenues and trying to understand the world and oneself. And I just, I really admired that. And I loved, I love your voice, dude. And I, I really enjoyed how it all like sounded like it had a very like I could really feel it start to shift and grow and like I said just like how we start with the city gave me asthma and but what am I leaving behind if I leave musically there was a main character too but I really enjoyed that I really I really did I had a good time it gave me a lot to think about it gave me a lot to feel and a lot of things I don't usually consider to consider and I think I really needed to feel that right now 
as 2020 has left, but 2021 is happening. I think I just really needed to feel that right now. Like I'm not the only one who feels so overwhelmed and conflicted and going through so many of these things. And I found it, it very comforting at times despite how painful it also was. Um, but yeah, uh, there you guys go. Those are my thoughts on Wilbur's Soots. Your city gave me asthma. Uh, what do you guys think? Are there things I, I missed? Other artists you want me to check out? Other Wilbur Soot songs you want me to listen to? Please let me know in the comment section down below. Uh, don't forget guys to like the video if you did, subscribe if you want more or to support the channel. Thank you so much for watching guys. Thank you for encouraging me to listen to his music. Both times this has really come in handy when I needed like either a, a laugh and something to talk about or something to really think about and distract my mind. It's been really helpful, guys. Again, there are links in the description for education resources on Black Lives Matter, the Trevor Project, and mental health resources and crisis lines should you or someone you know need them. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I appreciate you helping me find things to pick apart and distract me from all this, and I hope I can do the same for you. Be safe, wear a mask if you have to go outside, and remember to take care of yourselves, please.